Welcome to page 31 of Anatomy Coloring Book. This is Dr. Stephen Harkins. The upper limb, the bones of the forearm. There are two bones of the forearm, the ulna and the radius. And they both articulate with the humerus, which is the upper arm bone, which connects to the shoulder. That's the humerus. Uh, this is a look at the anterior portion, the anterior view of the right forearm. The ulna is this bone right here. And it is the main, what you would consider the main elbow bone, the main bone of the arm, the, the elbow, uh, the back of the elbow, the big bump on the back of the elbow. It's called the olecranon right here. This is the back of your elbow here and the olecranon. So this over here is the front view, the anterior view. And you can see it's a long bone that extends from the elbow all the way down to the wrist. And winds up being the smaller part of the outside of the wrist bone. Whereas at the elbow, it's <clears throat> at the elbow, it's very thick and strong and big, but it tapers down to the wrist and winds up being the smaller of the uh, bones at the, in the wrist area. So it articulates with the humerus here, the humerus, to form the elbow joint. There is, this area in here is called the trochlear notch. The trochlear notch. And it articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. And here is a side view of that, the trochlear notch, fitting nicely uh, as a nice fitting point for the trochlea of the humor, sort of a crescent-shaped articulation that accepts the convex trochlea of the humerus, the distal humerus. And here is the trochlea, the back, this is the posterior view, the back of the trochlea now. Fitting into, and you can't see now, since it's the back view, you can't see the trochlear notch in here. But the trochlea fits certainly in the trochlear notch on the other side here. Now, the ulna, the olecranon, the top of the crescent here fits into the olecranon fossa of the humerus. So it fits very, 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 very well. Matches up just perfectly to make a wonderful hinge joint. Now on the anterior portion is this coronoid process here. The coronoid process, and it fits into the coronoid fossa of the olecranon of the um, humerus on the anterior side of the humerus. The second bone of the elbow or of the forearm is the radial, is the radius. Radius is this next bone here, and this is the radial head, the head of the radius here which articulates and it's kind of scooped. It's kind of con scooped like this. And it fits into the convex head of the capitulum of the humerus. So the ulna and the trochlear notch fits into the... has, the tro has room for the trochlea to, of the humerus to fit in. And the radial head uh, makes a perfect fit for the capitulum of the humerus. Now, traveling on to the neck of the 
radius and the shaft. And on the medial side, And back to the ulna, notice the ulnar tuberosity here. That's a very, uh, it's a bump that provides a great insertion point for the biceps muscles. The lateral side of the ulna. And in between the two, what's called the interosseous membrane or the interosseous ligament these holes in between to let arteries and nerves go through right here and here we see from the posterior view the radius the radial head which articulates with the capitulum right there of the humerus and let's talk about how they articulate well or how they how, let's not talk about the movements. You can see from the medial view of the ulna here, you can see how it would make a very nice hinge joint. And the motion when the trochlea fits into the trochlear notch, you can see how flexion and extension would be the primary movements there. The elbow joint. Flexion, extension. In other words, bringing the arm closer to the upper arm or to the face, and then extending, straightening the elbow out. Flexion and extension. Now, the radio ulnar joint is different. The um, the radiohumeral joint and the radio ulnar joint is different. This joint does not just flex and extend, but it rotates into a, into, into a movement called supination, which is palms up, and pronation, which is palm down. Supination, palms up. Pronation, palm down. The ulna doesn't rotate. The humero ulnar joint does not rotate. It's actually the radio ulnar and the humero radio or radio humeral joint, this joint right here, that allows for rotation. What happens is this humeral head spins. on the capitulum. It spins around the capitulum. You can see right here, if the palm were to turn up, you see how the this joint will have spun around this way. When the palm turns down, the joint spins back in the other direction. And it spins like a top, I guess you could say, on, on, that, on that capitulum. So, more about the radius. Recall how the ulna was very thick and strong and then tapered off and got smaller at the wrist. This is the ulnar side of the joint. In the anatomical position, the ulna is the medial side. Medial side right here. But look how the radius gets bigger and fatter as we go down to the wrist. And there are two processes. There's the styloid for the radial styloid process here, and the ulnar styloid process on the medial side. The lateral side and the medial side. And those are the bumps you can feel on the end of your wrist. So no matter which way your wrist is twisted. You can always think of the thumb side being the side of the radius, the radial side. 
Here it is when the palm is up in supination, supination. The thumb side is the radial side. And you can always think of the pinky side as the ulnar side. So even when palms up, thumb side is the radial side. And um, when palm is down, the thumb side is still the radial side because the radius turns over the ulna. And when palm when palms down, the the ulnar side is still the pinky side. Radius is the thumb side. Ulna is the little finger side. So the rotation of the elbow or the wrist around the elbow joint is called supination and pronation palm up supination palm down pronation and this is the end of page 31 anatomy coloring book this is dr stephen harkins